The global economy is growing very slowly right now. And there is still a pretty high risk of recession uh, across the globe. If something goes wrong, it wouldn't take much to knock the economy off of its feet and uh, generate a pe some period of decline in, in, in the economy. What's interesting is that since we have pulled out of the pandemic, when the whole global economy was really weak, we're almost back to where the global economy usually is in that different parts of the economy are performing differently. Because very seldom does the whole global economy grow at the same pace uh, at the same time. The, uh, the U.S. economy in particular continues to grow at a good pace. The labor market at good pace, a modest pace, but good considering uh, global conditions right now. Uh, consumer spending is still pretty strong. Investment spending is still pretty, pretty strong and uh, the housing market is uh, fairly strong in the U.S. So all of that is good and is probably the strongest pillar on which the global economy can uh, stand right now. If you look at uh, Europe, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, it's really struggling to avoid recession, you know, but, but still growing uh, uh, modestly. Uh, but there's probably a greater chance of more interest rate hikes in, in Europe. Inflation is still higher in Europe than it is in the U.S. And then there's China. And uh, China just has so many imbalances uh, right now. At least it's, it's, it's still growing. Uh, I expect that it may very well, well reach its um, GDP growth target this year of about 5%, but it won't exceed it. And if anything goes wrong, they might come up short uh, a, a little bit. But the thing about the, the Chinese economy is that there's just so many um, imbalances, so many points of weakness from the property market to uh, high unemployment, uh, lack of consumer spending, uncertainty of government regulation, and then of course weak global trade. Uh, all of that works to slow the uh, economy down in China. And that's filtering through the rest of Asia in terms of lack of demand for trade between China, and Southeast Asia, East Asia, uh, and, and such. The uncertainty is more related to what the impact might be in terms of decoupling between China and, and the U.S and where that might uh, play in terms of the rest of the Asian economy and, and, and uh, Europe and the U.S. as well. Now, we know that uh, President Biden in the U.S. has just released his proposal uh, for limiting certain kinds of invest investments into China. It actually, in a sense, it turned out to be a little bit more nar narrow than we had expected. And so the impact may not be as bad as one might have expected. But it will, again, it will create a lot of uncertainty in terms of whether firms are going to be willing to continue to invest in uh, China and particularly in some of the really uh, high tech components of the economy where there might even be uh, more sanctions uh, uh, going forward. So we can already see a little bit of a shift in terms of investment moving to uh, Southeast Asia, to uh, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, other countries. Uh, even into Singapore, a little bit into uh, uh, Malaysia. In many ways, it is cheaper to operate in China. Uh, the in infrastructure is very good. It's very easy to move components from one part of China to another to, to, to manufacture. It's not quite so easy to move components within Southeast Asia, particularly to other, other parts of the world. So uh, there's a good chance that uh, we'll see uh, perhaps longer term, a little bit higher inflation uh, than what we might have expected uh, before the, these geopolitical differences arose. There's a good chance that interest rates will stay high for another year or so, uh, at, at least. Uh, right now, for example, uh, we expect that the Federal Reserve isn't going to begin to move interest rates down at all until the second half of 2024. So that's still seemingly a long way away. And if they keep interest rates fairly high, central banks around the rest of the world may uh, wait a as well. If they start moving sooner, it could have impacts on foreign exchange and capital flows uh, uh, and such. But on the other hand, uh, there could be good demand for uh, venture capital in that it looks like there's a few signs that the tech economy, it, it might be too much to say that it's turned around, but that at least it's bottomed out in terms of demand for semiconductors and particularly some very strong demand now for high-end uh, electronics that feed into AI and other components of sort of this new bergening uh, uh, technology that we're all learning how to use 
right now. So uh, I think patience is the watchword. Things will get better, but I wouldn't expect it this year, even beginning of next year, it might be the second half of next year before uh, things really start to kind of move again.